Hey, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. And welcome to today's webinar on securing your cloud infrastructure with Azure and Tynes. This is the third installment of our series following on from Wiz and AWS last year. Over the next half hour or so, uh, we're going to look at two stories designed to save money and resources and close potential security gaps in your Azure environment. I'm Michael Tolan, a security researcher at Tynes, and I'll be your host for today's session. Firstly, we look at the familiar task of updating groups assigned to a user in Microsoft Entra ID, also known as Azure Active Directory, showing a few key features of Tynes, which allows admins to update a user's group membership in seconds. This is essential for adding extra security to accounts flagged for suspicious activity quickly and protecting the team and company as a whole as a whole. Secondly, we'll jump into the process of deallocating and deleting unnecessary virtual machines in Azure while raising corresponding tickets in JIRA and Tynes cases. Efficient resource management in the cloud environment not only optimizes costs, but also mitigates vulnerabilities as unnecessary machines are removed before they can cause concern. The story showcases how Tynes automation streamlines this process ensuring unnecessary virtual machines are promptly addressed, enhancing your cloud infrastructure's resilience. A quick bit of housekeeping before we jump in. Um, I'll demonstrate both of these workflows back to back, but if you have any questions regarding Tynes or either of the stories that we're going to look through today, please feel free to leave them in the comment box below and I'll address them at the end of the webinar in the uh, Q&A section. Okay. Um, so let's jump into it. So I guess give, just to give a like brief introduction to Tynes, if this is your first time seeing the platform, Tynes is a smart, secure workflow builder um, built to give you, your team, or anyone else you know, um, a bit more freedom and autonomy to basically focus on the tasks which you need to focus on. Um, and Tynes, with the stories built in our story library uh, to automate and do some of the tasks in the background. These are mainly done through these seven different action types. For today, we're going to be looking mainly at these four, but I'll also give a brief overview of these two here. Um, they're all fairly self-explanatory. So the one in blue, uh, color coded is the HTTP request action. So this is either for sending um, a request via REST API to an endpoint, whether that be Slack, Microsoft Teams, CrowdStrike, or Azure, which will be the case for the majority of today. Um, that will send a request out, and then we'll get a payload um, in the bottom here, which we can use to um, analyze the requests further. The webhook action, again, fairly uh, straightforward. It's more of a like passive action on the storyboard. It means that if anything comes in um, to this specific address, it'll emit an action that we can then analyze and do stuff, do more things with it. Underneath it, we have this event transformation action, which is basically a way of taking some information and parsing it, um, manipulating it in some kind of way. If you're like used to programming or Excel, like spreadsheets, that type of thing before, um, you'll be very used to it. Uh, we have loads of different types of uh, formulas, different actions, and um, a lot which we'll demonstrate today. Um, you can also see here that if I want to drag um, or create any new actions, it's literally drag, drop onto the storyboard. It's a very visual uh, medium in order to um, brainstorm and put your different stories together. Just delete those. And then at the bottom here, we have this trigger action, which can be thought of to be um, like basic uh, yes, no, um, allow things to flow further down. Um, so say if I was to make a very quick story here, now I've laid these three um, actions um, in this particular way. So if I want to get the results of this webhook action um, and like potentially bring it to the event transform action, it's drag, drop, and now these two actions are connected. So whatever comes into this action will then flow into 
the event transform action beneath it. Likewise, if I was to bring the event transform action down to the trigger action, um, we now have a mini story or workflow here. Um, so for this HTTP request action, you can see that over here in the right hand pane where we have all of our uh, values displayed. So this is the URL, which I'm going to send um, my payload to. So this uh, is going to this webhook URL here. You can see content type JSON method post. So I'm posting the information across to the webhook. And then this is just an example um, of a JSON payload, which you can modify uh, if I was to do bar one, bar two, et cetera. Um, all very customizable from here. If I click run, so we see a few things happening here. One, we see this blue arrow here, which means that we've emitted an event. If I click to the events here, drag this up so we can see the HTTP request action. We can see the body status 201 looks good. I'm just going to click into this status okay. Um, so that all looks good there. And then on here, we can see the webhook action that received one uh, event coming into it. And we could see that it was emitting an event below it. One of the things that we can do with an event transform action is actually explode loops or uh, pieces of data. So if we see here, if we go back to the HTTP request action, we actually have this array here of two different values, foo and bar. So what I've done here is I've set the mode. So we can see here, the event transform action has several different modes that we can do, whether it's extracting, exploding, deduplicating, um, very important one if you are like going through alerts or like loads of pieces of data that you're only looking at the first one which comes through, message only, delay if you want to wait a specific um, length of time before passing an event to uh, the action beneath it, implode, which is the reverse of explode, and then throttle, again, kind of similar to delay of uh, making actions uh, slow down through your story here. We can see here in the path, this slightly different color, which means that we're now referencing a formula or a pill as uh, we call it in times. We can see here that we're basically specifying a dynamic value, so dynamic variable or something which can refer to um, a piece of information from a previous action here. So you can see here, we're exploding this piece of data. So webhook action. So the first part is always the action it's coming from. We can see the body and then the array example. We can also see the result here of what we're looking at here. Just to double check. So if I click into the events here, webhook action, body, array example. So we can see that there are two different items in this array, which means that we've now exploded this array into two different events, which explains why we now have two different events coming off this action here. This trigger action here, as I said before, um, is kind of like a yes or no um, to like let events pass as further down, if we had any other actions here, say if I had another HTTP request action, I want to connect it to that. Maybe I only want events from this webhook action to pass down if a certain criteria is fulfilled. Um, in this case, I've done if the exploded event here is equal to foo. So remember in our original array, we have two values here. Um, to bar, so two different events. And then we have a trigger basically saying only a let something pass down if it's foo. So that explains why we have two here and then one here. Um, yeah, so that's basically the four actions here. And then the other two um, actions here, um, which we won't look at in too much detail today, but just as a FYI that they're there, the send email action, very straightforward. You can send an email from within times to any email address. And then a similar receive email action, almost think of the email version of the webhook action, 
when any email comes into this uh, specific inbox here, um, it'll send off a ding. So if I do this, should go through. Yeah, so I've sent one email here and I've just sent it to go to this email action here just to show that everything's working. This um, final action here, uh, sent the story, we'll look at in a few minutes as we use it in our first story. Um, grand. So now with our brief introduction to times at the moment, we are going to look at our first story for updating groups assigned to a user in Microsoft Entra ID. This is a fairly, I would say, common use case across, across like IT and security. Um, perhaps you have a lot of users which you might need to update um, for one reason or another. A few times, well, potentially that might take a bit of time for an analyst to do, especially if they need to do it um, to a lot of people. Um, or potentially you might get a security alert and you might want to update a user's uh, security groups in Azure Entra ID very quickly. Um, and within this story, I'll show you how easy it is to do it within times, both for an analyst or to connect it up to a wider story so that it can kind of run in the background, saves you or your analyst um, or your team a lot of time. So this is a story as you import it. Um, we can see here up at the top um, what we have here, if I just jump into it, is another relatively new introduction to times, I would say within the last year or so. Um, it is called the page action or page element. We just wait for that to boot up. Uh, Wi-Fi slightly slow. There we go. So page, pretty much a custom UI element, fully customizable. So say within your organization, this would be what you would show towards your analyst or your team. So they don't even need to like know how anything else is going on in the story here unless they want to. Um, so you can basically make self-service pages for your analysts, people in HR, IT, et cetera. Um, so what this is doing here is just a kind of a welcome page saying, hey, um, who do you want to update the groups in Enter ID for? I've pre-filled this with a test user in our in my environment. So if I click here, Jessica Jones, I'll just give that a refresh. So we can see that she is a new user in sales um, and in America. Say potentially if I've heard um, in for whatever reason that, oh, she's actually moving over to Europe um, and she's now going to work in finance. And because she's now working in finance, that requires extra security. So if I click into continue, Tynes will do things in the background. If I click uh, back here, so we can see here that I've submitted something from within Tynes. The next action, what you can see what we're doing is that we're doing a call out to Microsoft Graph API. So chatting out to Azure. Um, we're using this pill, so dynamic value, that we're using the email that we specified in the original page, um, basically trying to see, okay, first of all, does this user exist? This is why we're now using a trigger below that. So yes, no, we're just going on if the sta status is equal to 200, which usually means, yes, we have found this person and that person does exist. So we go on to the next one. So we do another call to Entra ID, basically to see what groups are available um, within your Azure environment. And um, what we're doing following on from that is seeing what uh, groups Jessica Jones is a member of. So that at least that gives us a starting point. And then what we're doing on the next few actions here is that we're just using event transform, um, event transform actions to basically format the data. So it means that it's a lot easier for us to work with. Um, you could do all of this in, like say, many steps here. So you can see I'm doing this in a loop, um, doing more loops there, and then using, um, you can see the difference formula. So this is kind of a showing like within times, a few of the Excel, like programmy types of um, formulas that we have. 
Um, but similar, if you've ever like programmed or done something like that before, um, there's a million ways to do this. Just, just kind of giving you one example of how we're doing it within this story. So now after all that's been done, if I click back here, so we can actually see, okay, so times we've found all of the uh, groups that are in our organization. And what we've actually done is that we've pre-filled all of the groups that uh, Jessica is a member of. And um, this gives us a good starting point since we now know, okay, this is what she's a part of. As we said before, we know that she is now moving to the EU. Um, she is now going to be in finance, so no longer in sales. And she's been here a few months, so we can take off the new user group by clicking to submit. Wait for that to load. And you can see with pretty much immediately, we get this confirmation within times, within a nice looking table. America removed successfully, sales, new user, and then the two new groups, finance, EU, um, added successfully just to prove that um, that actually did work in the background. If we go to refresh Jennifer Jones, um, we can see that those groups have updated um, pretty much immediately. So we can see here, so this was the page where I decided to select what groups Jessica should be a part of. Um, what we're doing here is basically getting the information from um, the page action above. And similar to what I showed in the demo um, story a few minutes ago, we can say that we're now using the explode action again. So we have an, an array of all of the groups that we needed to add. So there were two new groups. There was the, um, actually, let me just click into this because my memory isn't the best. Click into this. So groups to add. EU and finance, because she is moving over from the US. Um, and so America, sales, new user, these are the groups that we need to remove. So that also makes sense. So we can see three different times we're going to want to remove um, Jessica from the group. So this is why this explode is on three. And then similarly on the left-hand side for groups to add EU and finance, if I just click into one of these as an example, we can see here, so this was the event um, history for the EU run that we can see here. Within Entra, we don't get any um, body confirmation, but we can see status 204, which we know in Entra uh, means that things went well. So we can see here the success messages all looking good. We're now using the implode. So we know that um, within the uh, explode, sorry. So within the extract group changes, we have two groups that we want to add, three groups that we want to remove. That gives us a total of five. So that, that means that we're able to basically specify when five events come through and co come uh, collect all of this into the one result event and then display the results in the final page which we've seen here. Um, so that's kind of a very quick overview um, of how you can use pages to like have self-service pieces for analysts, but you can see how like easy, easily flexible these are. So if I like say I wanted to edit any of these, um, if I wanted to throw a new elements, very quick to do. If I wanted to maybe select a specific theme, if I wanted to add a company logo just to give the pages a bit more professionalism, I guess, um, you can have that there. Um, one quick thing which I want to note on if, um, if my uh, beautiful face can be removed from the bottom left for a second. So you can see that these stories here are all um great so i know like what all of these do potentially i might want to do something with uh maybe something has come up i've got an idea that i want to list all of the users within my entry organization now what i could do is that i could go out to the um uh documentation for um entry id and do it that way 
which uh, I will say to Microsoft's credit or is actually pretty useful, but potentially I don't want to set up um, like a new HTTP request um, from scratch. What I can do, so we can see here templates in the bottom left. If I click into that, we can see here a list of, I'd say thousands of different templates for uh, different products that we have. I know that I'm looking for, uh, if I just type in graph, I'm now going to drag that template on. And then this will give me a list of, so you can see 125 different template actions within Microsoft that we can do. Uh, if I was looking for list user, uh, get all users using MS Graph or Office 365. That looks to be what I'm looking for. So we can see here, we have a new HTTP request action here. I know that I'll need to change the default credential to the one which I have to authenticate to Azure. Um, so I think mine is enter ID. Um, that looks good. Yeah, and we also have a handy description just so that I know I'm on the right path. If I click into this run, check into events. And yeah, this all looks good. Perfect. This looks like all of the users in my tenant. So you can see here the use of templates. Um, very useful for getting up and started with uh, tie-ins or even advanced users. Um, that being said, all of this is still free text field. So if you have your own custom API, et cetera, um, you can use that. Um, so, um, so this is kind of how you could do it with pages. Uh, but like, say, if I was saying before, say if an automated alert went off and you wanted to basically do all of this without a user kind of going in, since you could argue, okay, this UI is fine, but I could also just hop into uh, Azure and do it myself. This is why if I go back to the demo story, if I scroll over here, um, so you can see here, potentially you might have gotten alert or some notification saying that, hey, a user is moving to um, Ireland or this person needs to be put in another uh, security group. Um, so what I can do here is now use the last of our seven actions, the send a story action. So what this is doing, it's basically saying, hey, this story here, I want to send a payload to it using a webhook. So what I'm doing here is I'm first checking to see, uh, so calling the username from the alert, whatever it may be, I'm first doing a check to see, um, is that user in it? And if I flick back over to here, we can see on the right-hand side of this, uh, story we have this like full done out kind of like mini api in a sense um just to see um if the user is a part of this group in enter id so i see if i actually click it again will it be quick enough yeah so you can also see the like numbers going up um as you can see it in real time and then so we know that uh if I check the results of that, user is not in a group with this name. Again, with a trigger, um, so 404, so user not found, connect that again. We are now going to add this user to the Ireland group. So if I do this again, click. So it's going to use the sent the story once. And is that user in Ireland? No. So then, then adds Jennifer uh, to the group. And if I just double check here, we refresh that, we can see that she's now been added. So this is kind of more of a example usage of why you might want to use a sent the story um, as opposed to a page. But uh, within this story, we have the ability to do both. So both the front user end uh, perspective, if they want to do it manually, and then also conversely, a more background um, automated way of doing things if that suits your workflow there. Um, that's pretty much the story here. Um, again, if you have any questions regarding 
the story setup, use cases, stuff like that, feel free to drop them in the chat and I'll give them a look at the Q&A section at the end. Um, before we delve into the next story, just a quick shout out that, yes, we are authenticating to um, Azure. Now, how is that done? Um, within all stories within the library, we do have this uh, basically saying, if you are authenticating to a service, whether it be Wiz, AWS, uh, CrowdStrike, etc., we always have this little note in here telling you how to authenticate. So you can see here, any of their entra bits here. Um, this is like how you set up authentication for it. We also have, I think, so 102 different specific uh, authentication guides on how to authenticate to your chosen platform within times. So if I type in graph, click into that. So we can see here a fully detailed guide of how to authenticate with um, Azure or Microsoft Graph, depending on what you're trying to do there. So just wanted to shout that out. Um, cool. And um, the next one that we are going to look at is deallocating and deleting unnecessary virtual machines in Azure and raise tickets. So kind of as the name describes and in a similar vein to the first story, this is a Boda security um, story or workflow, and then also a kind of like general IT and like cost management story. Um, I think anyone who's set up a like Azure or AWS or any other environment knows the costs of um, leaving virtual machines running for an extended period of time. And then also the security implications, especially if you have um, unprotected like inbound ports. Um, what this story will do that we can see here is that it routinely scans your Azure cloud environment, sees are there any uh, virtual machines which have been running for over 24 hours. Um, it, if it sees any of them, it does a quick check to see, is it on a safe list or not? So we'll jump into that in a second. Um, and then depending on the machine's uh, status, it will then shut it down if it's been running for over 24 hours. And then um, what it will also do so say on Monday it runs, it sees that um, a virtual machine was running for over 24 hours during the weekend. It'll shut that down. And the next time this runs, um, which could be the next day or how often you want to uh, set the schedule on the action to run, it will then see if it's been stopped for over 24 hours. It'll actually delete all of the virtual machine all of its resources, and then create a ticket in JIRA or uh, Tynes cases, which I'll also give a bit of a demo of. Um, just to give a quick look here, I have two different uh, webinar machines. So running, it's racking me up a big bill and potentially uh, could be incurring me with a cost, um, which I won't know about until the bill comes at the end of the month. Um, if I jump into here, um, so we can see it starts off. What we're doing at the beginning is looking at a resource. So a resource is um, another, uh, basically our name for global resources. So within Azure, we have uh, subscriptions. If we want to segregate our resources out, I just have the one Azure subscription ID that I'm looking at today. Um, this will explode any of those. Within the subscription in Azure, we're then going to do a call out saying, hey, within that uh, subscription, are there any virtual machines? We're then using the explode event transform action again, um, if there are multiple there. There's then this trigger action, which I'll come back to in a few minutes. Um, we then get the extract virtual machine information. So we can see here more formulas at work on looking uh, to basically get some key information out that we can use later on also for creating the ticket. We then get that very specific virtual machine using more triggers here if it's running. So what we're doing here is looking at the status of it. If it's running, pass it down. 
if it's been running for over 24 hours. So I just have it based it here in seconds. So we can see here Unix timestamp, which is now, and then um, getting the date on um, how long it's been, on how long the virtual machine has been running. If there's a difference of these amount of seconds, which is 30 days, it'll then pass it on to the next HTTP request action, which will deallocate slash shut it down. Um, just to put that into practice, if I click this, uh, so run it. So we can also see here at the top right, this little, uh, yeah, this little uh, clock symbol. So for in pretty much any action, I think, um, you can go into the status thing here uh, in the right-hand bar. And I can see here that I have this schedule to go up every day at 9 a.m. Well, I can have this to be as infrequent or frequent as I want. So listing all the virtual machines here, exploding two virtual machines, because I know that I have two here. Um, we can see neither of them are on the safe list, which we'll look at in a second. So we can see here, going down two, 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 virtual machine is running. And then virtual machine has been running for over 24 hours. I've only just spun these virtual machines up in the past, uh, I think it was this morning. So we know that uh, it won't pass here, but for the sake of the demo, I'm just going to uh, delete that part from the story. So you can see if I want to move or troubleshoot things, it's very straightforward to do here. I'm going to click it around um, and I'm going to re-emit the last action here. So if I do this, re-emit. So this is going to take one of the virtual machines that I've chosen, and then it's going to deallocate slash stop it. If I jump back into Azure here, click refresh, it might take a second or two to start. Let's see, which one was it? Uh, events. Machines, deallocate. Machines two. Maybe give the page a refresh. That could be what. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we can see webinar machine two has been stopped because it was running for over 24 hours. And uh, whereas the first one is still going strong. Um Say now potentially it's been another uh, day or so, um, and I want to uh, stop that uh, or basically delete that machine since it's been run since it's been stopped for over twenty four hours. Um, I will just re-enable this uh, um, trigger action here. I'll go up to the top. We'll pretend it's the next morning. I'll run this again. We can see here going down here. So we can see virtual machine is stopped or deallocated. I've already disconnected this part here. Um, so we can see here in the background, we're deleting the uh, virtual machine in Azure. This group action here, um, it's exactly as it sounds like, pretty much goes in. If you want to have a, like say a larger part of your story condensed, you can group them into a smaller uh, set of actions here just to tidy up the storyboard. Um, and then within here, we can see that we're creating a ticket in JIRA or creating a case in Tynes. Now, as I said um, before, we have like templates for loads of different other uh, services. So say for example, if I, uh, I didn't want to get a ticket in JIRA when any of these um, steps were done, but I wanted to, like say, send a message into Slack. I could just do send, uh, send a message, click here. And then it would just be drag, drop, um, and then pretty much filling in all of the information here on what I would want that Slack message to be. So like all of the stories that we have in our uh, story library at the moment, which I think is 705-ish, um, these are all good starting points, but by all means, feel free to take any of these and 
make them whatever suits you and your team most. Um, if I check into Jira, just to give an example, oh, this looks good. We can see here information on the virtual machine, just to give a bit more information, and then all of the resources um, related to it, which were deleted. So um, you can see kind of the power of this story, um, if you have this running in the background. So it'll do everything um, automated, but it will also like create the ticket for you. So it means that you can check back in saying, oh, okay, this was um, something automated happened, but at least I get the notification of something did go on. If I want to see that in Tynes cases, so our own um, case management system, um, it should create something similar for us there. Um, just waiting for that to load. Um, I think while that loads in the background, um, I'm living in the middle of the country in Ireland, so our Wi-Fi isn't the best. And um, you'll have to, uh, yeah, I apologize for that part of it. Um, so and then just a very last thing, say if I wanted to safe list a machine. So say if this is running pretty much around the clock, um, I know that this will run, but potentially I have a few virtual machines which I don't want to be touched by this process here. What we have over on the right is another um, like list of pages here. If I want to do this, if I want to hop in, um, if I want to, so I know webinar machine two has been deleted, so I'll need to change this to webinar machine one. And um, you can see here, this is where you would like fill out the resource ID of the virtual machine that you want to safe list, pretty much protect uh, the person requesting it. Um, the reason uh, needed for engineering blah, blah, blah. at the safe list. It'll then do a quick check to see, has this person put in an actual virtual machine, which we can find. So we can see here um, that this is all of the virtual machine information. This looks good to me. Safe list this. We'll also do more HTTP calls in the background, which we'll jump into in a quick second. Um, should go. And we can see here, machine added to watch list, safe list. And so if I hop back here, so we can see what kind of went on in the background. Um, we do another call to Azure to see, hey, is X running? Or um, does this virtual machine exist? More of our trigger actions again. Yes, we do a check to see, has someone safe listed this machine before? Um, that hasn't happened, so it passes down to here. And then I've clicked yes for safe listing the machine. So we have more of a group action here. Just hop into it. All that I'm doing here is updating the resource. So global variable in times just to say, hey, the next time the story runs or for all intents and purposes, the next time these uh, stories run, uh, don't uh, do anything to this virtual machine. So it is now the next day. Uh, if I actually just delete all of the events here, just to make it a bit clearer what's going on, and then run that again. So we can see here, we did the explode Azure subscription, list the virtual machines here, explode the individual virtual machines. And then because our machine is on the safe list, so we're using more formulas here, um, to see is this virtual machine ID on our safe list? It is, so it means that there's no uh, green number here, which means that it's now protected, won't be shut off or deleted. If I jump back into Tynes here, uh, just to give a quick last look. So we can see here um, within Tynes own platform, we have case management system. We can see it's pretty much the same as what's in uh, Jira. Um, yeah, just to give you a bit more information that you can uh, take a look at this, leave any comments saying, hey, uh, should this be added to the safe list or not? But 
yeah, all in Markdown. So if I click in here, you can see again, like um, all easily editable if you want, test, comment, done. So again, freely flexible to kind of do what you want with it. Um, and then, yeah, so this is another quick story on how to basically protect your uh, Azure cloud environment. Um, hope those two stories were of use. Uh, we'll take a quick uh, break um, just to take a look through the questions and then, yeah, we'll take a look. Grand. Um, yeah, so two very good questions here. Um, the first one uh, of where can I access the first two sessions of securing your cloud infrastructure? Um, the answer is that if you go to tines.com slash webinars, um, and if you scroll down a bit, so you can see here, securing your cloud infrastructure with Tines and Wiz, and then, oh yeah, right below, you'll find the first one in the series, securing your cloud infrastructure with AWS, um, among loads of other uh, webinars or other bits and pieces of content that we've put out before. Uh, highly recommend, I've used these a lot for preparation for today. So uh, thanks again to those. The second question, also very good. Also, thanks. Uh, I love the template idea. Is there documentation I can read to learn more? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, again, so tines.com slash docs slash actions uh, templates um, here. But uh, if you just go to tines.com slash docs or probably just Google tines um, templates, actually, will I put this to the test? Tines, docs, templates. Okay, cool. So pretty much the first link there. Um, it'll give you an introduction on uh, public templates um, on how to kind of configure and use them. Um, yeah, also very highly recommend looking through the documentation if you have any questions. Um, but yeah, great to hear that um, we got some interest. Um, we'll take one last look to see if there's any more questions. Yeah, I think that seems to be it for today. Um, so thanks again for coming along to this webinar on securing your cloud infrastructure with uh, Tynes and Azure. Hope you all have a good morning, afternoon, evening, and Chat soon.